today we are at Whitedale Railway Station on the former Hull to Hornsey railway line. So here we are, Whitedale Railway Station. Right here, the station house is now a private residence, but it is part of the features of this lovely rail trail. As we can see there, the platform there going towards Hornsey. Hornsey is that way. Hull is back that way. So we're just here at the end of the platforms looking towards Hornsey and the signal box used to be just there and there's absolutely no sign of it whatsoever now completely removed and the crossing for the road just here that used to sit on maybe that oh yeah that looks original it does yeah Unless it's just asphalt that they've tipped there, you know, when, they've, when the council have done the road up. Paul's now stood on the location where the signal box was. Is there any sign at all, Paul? Or has it just grassed over? Just grassed over. It's pretty difficult to tell now what the sound here. Yeah, so what we've done, viewers, is the original footage that you've seen in this video was from November 2021 and it was actually the pilot for this series the Hull to Hornsey series we filmed the pilot for that series here at Whitedale we've come back it's now June 2023 and we're just getting some b-rolls because put bluntly my filmography experience has come on a couple of years so we're just getting some better shots to try and put the video together in the best way with my knowledge and experience as I can for you, the viewer. Paul saying he might have found something. I first noticed this hardcore brick here. Yeah. Now, I'm not quite sure that, what that would have been, but... I noticed there was a hole there, and as I put my foot in, it goes very deep, which could have been the troughs for signalling cable. I can't really see much, but... So just as a visual reference, Paul is digging with his foot just there, and this square area here, this is where the signal box was. So that would have been at the back of the signal box. And there was, in photos that I'll put up, there was a wheel for the level crossing. That could have been where the rope or rod gearing from the wheel went to the crossing gates, because the crossing gates would have been operated by that wheel. Is that correct, Paul? That's very correct, yes, absolutely. It's by um, rodding, which is then by a wire. And that wheel was within the signal box that you can see on the old photographs. And then there was a there was a signal just here, Paul. What what would that signal have been? It's just at the end of the platform. That would have been a protecting signal for the uh, level crossing. Just the trunks in. Who's tr who's trumped in? Eighties uh, cartoon. Trumped in anybody? Someone said the other day that you look like Cat Weasel. I had to Google who it was. And do I? <laughs> yeah, you do a bit, yeah. <laughs> Cat Weasel. I know the name, but I, don't, I can't recognise the programme. Cat Weasel. I'll get it up on my phone now. Yeah, so just for reference, that is Cat Weasel there. And that is Paul. Do you think there's a likeness, viewers? <laughs> no resemblance. So, back to the railway. Right, up until a few years ago, there was a, a station hut on the platform, um, and that was the original one when it was built and when it was just before it closed, and it was still here up until I believe eight years ago. So, correction, I think it was still here up until eight years ago, and it's gone now. 
Yes. Wow. And we filmed this two years ago, and it was gone then. Mm -hmm. We'll just look at that location now. We've been on that face, Andy. We stood on it last time. I was just saying off camera viewers that the old photographs we've got that were taken from over there, the signal box was here, and we couldn't see this hut. But I was just thinking, the hut might have been obscured by the signal box because of the angle of the photography. Andy, the hut was definitely here. Yeah, you know it, well, because the base is there. No. Because you've seen it. When I used to cycle from Hull to Haunty quite a lot, I used to stop here and have something to eat. And there was always a wooden hut here. It used to have a couple of sands on it. But what got my attention was two big massive wooden sleepers used to stick out on the rear of the building. And these have been cut down. Yeah, they've been chopped off, haven't they? So I know that's this, this is where that hut was. Yeah. Should be one over there as well. Yeah, the worst thing is now is I've got to now get in there to get a B-roll of those. Let's wash it all down. And oh, I have got shorts on. Have you got a, a sticker or a bit of cardboard? It's not Blue Peter. <laughs> yeah. We've got a sticker or a bit of cardboard. All down. Yeah, we're just after flattening the uh, overgrowth here down. I might have to be... I might have should have just used my feet. So I haven't got any gardening tools with me. So I'm not in that line of work. But we're just trying to get to the back of these sleepers. Ow! Yeah, don't wear trainer socks for exploring. Oh yeah, we can see the brickwork now. So that says to me that this hut was definitely here when the old photographs were taken in 1905 and 1911. We're going to take a walk down this track bed now, which is a public footpath. So if you want to visit here, you can do. Put a map up of where this is. There's a little car park just there. So you can visit here and it's flat, you know, if you're not that good at walking. This is a good place to come. we got exploring Dave with us today and Paul, the photographer. Well, let's have a look at these platforms. So people would have stood on these platform stones here to get on to the trains travelling back towards Hull. And this is the concrete construction platform. And then if we look at the platform at the other side, and that is the, is it up to Hornsey and down to Hull? Yes. So if we look at the up platform, if we can find a gap between the nettles, yeah. we'll see that it's of brick construction with concrete capping on top, which does beg the question, was this originally a single track line and then it was doubled when the North Eastern Railway got the hands on it or was it always a double track line and the platforms are just constructed differently for some reason what do you think viewers leave us a comment if you have any comments or answers to my questions there's a piece of combusted coal there, also known as slag, that has just sat on the concrete stone on the up platform towards Hornsey. And there's some coal drops here which we're going to show you as well. So we've got Dave and Paul at the end of the platforms down on the track bed. We're just going to walk it ourselves, right off the end of the platform. There's an interesting stone here. This looks like it's had something affixed to it in the past. And then that way to Hornsey, and that way back to Hull, on this Hull to Hornsey railway. The started, the spares started over there, quite a way back. Because on the plants, it's quite a long siding. Yeah, they are quite long sidings. We've been looking at rail map online. So 
so we've got a lovely good platform there where the boundary was, so you can see where it starts to converge off. Yeah, the sort of least part of the land gets yeah. wider here. Yeah, so it's here now. So about where the, these trees are here, it starts to widen yeah. off. Yeah. And you see the boundary marker posts are getting a bit further apart, and this was the boundary of the railway right here. These are the boundary posts. <laughs> so it's a bit of a different design, this, this platform, isn't it? Squared off at the end. Squared off at the end, so would this have been... So there's been a line down there. And a line down there. And so then this is sort of just squared off. Line there, the line would have come here, so the buffers, the buffers would have been there, I reckon. Okay, so that would have been a buffer stop. Yeah, the line would have gone here. Okay. Yeah, you would have had two lines here, yeah, because the, the main line was there, the passenger line, and then the sidings here. This is wide enough for two lines here. But as Dave rightly says, why would there be... Why would they have a squared in? So, viewers, using Rail Map Online as a resource, we can see that there is, in fact, two long sidings here. The one in the centre, between the main running lines between Hull and Hornsey, and the long siding. That was also a run up for the large coal drops that were here at Whitedale. The other siding ran alongside this long platform which was used primarily for goods. It was never really used for passenger services. And it isn't just a cattle dock, it's much longer as you can see. So, back to the video. So just up on the goods platform, and this, Having been to all the other stations along this route, the goods platform here is much longer and wider and double-sided than the goods platforms or cattle docks we've seen at Ellaby, for example, and other stations along this route. Where was the other one? Scala. This is three times the length of those and it's double-sided whereas the others looked like they only loaded from one side whereas as we've seen on the rail map online mapping is there was a line this side and that side on this goods platform I believe this was for cattle. Yeah, okay. And we've got the hand-fired bricks here that we've seen in this area. Uh, this, this type of brick, unmarked, just mass-produced railway brick. Just left behind, but I've never seen a construction of platform like this with these, what are they, concrete blocks? concrete block platform probably quite efficient to make because concrete was quite a marvel of engineering back in the turn of the 20th century so to make something out of mass-produced concrete like this is uh, well it's a good idea really because it's a lot cheaper than bricks quicker to produce and there we are one concrete goods platform here at Whitedale. Look at these two posts here, Andy. Yeah. What would these have been for? Well, I believe this could have been a what's it called a cattle dock. So it is all predominantly farms around yes, here, it isn't is, it? Yeah. I believe livestock come onto here to be loaded onto cattle wagons. Ah. Because I can't understand why these two posts would be here if it wasn't to prevent cattle from wandering off gate it, the land. gate it off yeah. yeah yeah gate it off so the cattle could be uh taken to market so brought in on here loaded onto 
goods trains here to be taken off to market so the cattle would have walked up here with the farmer and been and they would have been herded onto uh, rail wagons here to be taken away and these are the gate posts what would have been the gate posts here at this goods platform you can see nails so viewers we've got the cattle platform over there and then here looks like there was a plate layers hut precast concrete here which has had a wooden post set into it and then over here we believe we've found one of the wooden posts that's rotted down and it's nailed or staked to a much larger piece of wood corrugated galve steel there then we've got lots of old pieces of railway sleeper left behind here in the leaves precast concrete more railway sleepers we definitely think there was a structure here possibly either a goods little goods shed or shelter or a plate layers hut now we'll see more precast concrete left behind and there's a large sandstone slab here that were found just under the leaves more wood and then the passenger platforms are just over there Saying that, the bricks look very old. They're old. They're very old. And that concrete's old as well, to be honest. And that similar galve steel that we've seen before where we thought there was a plate layers hut. What we got, Paul? The first one. Oh no, pot pipe. That's not pot, that's actually cast. It is, that's it, that's it. This has been a little hut. Oh, it has, not it? that's been the chimney so this is it viewers we'll come back because at the time we didn't know the importance of this of this chimney and we've got stung a bit getting to it but we found it here it is in the overgrowth this is it we'll try and pull it out it's quite heavy that is the chimney from the stove Try and film down it. Let's put the cast iron in it. Yeah, I'll just show my torch. Uh, my phone torch down it. Uh, proper cast, and you can see the soot lining. And we think this was from a little waiting room. And there's a photograph of it on the screen. And this is the chimney from it. And the demolished parts of the building are just beyond there. Just It's all smashed up there. And the platform, down platform to hull, is just there. Yeah, and that's remains of the waiting room there, just beyond those nettles. And that is it. That is the, that is the chimney that we wanted to show you in greater detail. And we're gonna put it back now, so we never take things. We moved it and a load of ashes falling out the bottom. So we're getting to the top now of the cold drop area. Can't watch my footings now because it will fall away very suddenly as we get to the first one. And then the railway cars would have gone over these drops here. Yeah, look at the back of this retaining wall here, viewers. Hartley & Co Limited, Castleford Bricks right there 
and there's a lot of them all under these all under here I believe the back of this coal drop here the other side of there is a coal drops this has been painted white and they usually paint things white like that because they build something off it so I think there was a building on here and they've chopped into the bricks there to attach the building to them we can see there where there's been a wall uh, and then another one here so we think there's something being attached to the back of this may have just been a wooden structure but there was certainly something there White and Co Castleford so this is the ramp going up towards the coal drops Hornsea is there to the left the station is behind me and this is the ramp going left to right towards the coal drops that are just beyond those trees and bushes there so here are some steps now a few of them have fallen away because these trees have grown through them but here is a set of steps going up here to the beginning of the coal drops there so let's go back down and we'll have a look at these coal drops so this is the start of the retaining wall to build up the bank required for the coal drop area so the rails would have come across here they would have actually come across the top of here and joined onto that piece of wood there and gone across all the different coal drops and the coal would have been dumped down into this bunker area and that was the idea of these coal drops to the local farmers we can see that the the wood has had tar applied to it to strengthen it make it last which it has done because this railway has been closed for a number of years and that hardwood is still solid The brickwork's in great condition, considering its age and it's got the rounded edges to the bricks there, and we can see some of the old ironwork at the back running along the back of these coal drops. Let's climb up now. I believe this is part of the old railway line right here. So I'm up in the coal drops now with Dave and Paul. We've got the start of the coal drops there, that way to Hornsea. And then we've got this wooden section here, the actual area where the coal was dumped. We can see here in the concrete where something used to be indented in it. And then we've got some studs here that have been cut off one of the old railway type bricks and then here at the edge the really special part the actual rail line that's been left in they've cut it off at either side but because this is bonded into the concrete they couldn't they couldn't be bothered to remove it so they've just left it in and this is part this is an actual rail of the hull to Hornsey railway left behind bonded into this concrete then up here we've got what looks like a gutter this this trough here looks like guttering to me and it runs all the way along the back of this coal drop because as we've previously seen we think there was a building on the other side 
of this cold drop climbing down this rather steep bank that's been left behind I don't think this is coal below me I think it's just rubble someone's dumped in there we've got the rest of the coal drops it's got another one there and it's strange can somebody tell me why there is concrete then a wooden section then a concrete section then a wooden section and then back to concrete again it's every other one's wood and every other one's concrete and I don't know why climbing in this one you can see at the back another section of cut off rail line because it's bonded into the concrete and they couldn't get it out quickly so they just chopped it off and left it just coming up here viewers one of the old Whitedale signs is still present here at the station can you see it on the other platform there viewers in the centre of the screen now looking a bit faded where we've got a hanging insulator and a spare capacity at the top of the telegraph pole they would have been connected to the railway because if you follow the line all the way across to the next telegraph pole there's also capacity at the top and then as you look to the station house, above that green door to your left, there is an insulator there also, which would have been connected. Telephone line or electrical. There is, there's all spare ways on those, isn't there? Yes. And then back to this one, excuse the quick camera movement, there's even a spare way, a spare power cable hanging down off the pole. It's very likely still live and it's got an insulator on it. So that could have come across from there to the signal box that was just there. So do you know you can find a location where you are and you didn't know where you was? Just look for a telegraph pole because on the telegraph pole you should come across a set of codes, numbers and letters. Now all I know this is because a few um, airbexes have inadvertently panned across to the telegraph poles and I checked on one of them telegraph poles and I found a location of an airbex site all from doing that so you can inadvertently put the location in when you're trying to conceal it just by filming those letters and numbers obviously you've got to know what you're looking for and where to search for them yeah. I doubt you'd get that on the which, Google. <laughs> no, which I don't know where to look, but Paul does. And just beyond the nettles there is the original gate posts, like we saw at Scala. So they're from 1864. Is so the original gate still on? Is there? Yeah. The gate's still. Oh my! It's that like ironmongery and the wood. 1864 era. I mean, yeah, it could have been repaired at some point, but we're just going to go with that that's when the railway opened, and there's a high likeliness that that is original. Because as we know, this railway wasn't even open for a hundred years before the Doctor Beaching cuts closed it. Right, viewers, we're just on the platform looking back towards Hornsea and remember the chimney on what we thought was the waiting room? Well, there's one there on the station building. There's actually two. There's that one just to the right of the brick chimney and it's got a fire stop on it. And then one there on one of the outbuildings. Similar cast chimney construction on the main station building. So it just cements the fact that we think that that was part of the waiting room that was there in 1905 and 1911. And it was possibly there until the end, but as Paul rightly states, there was also some sort of waiting room here, which we filmed earlier. And that is a location where the signal box was, here at Whitedale. Well, it's come to that point in the video, viewers, 
that it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe on the circle on screen and I will see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time with another video. Bye bye for now.